Hello, welcome and thank you for joining us in this webinar and for taking the time out of your day for listening in. I hope you all can uh, see my screen. You should be able to see a uh, PowerPoint slide with a blue background that says Introduction to Griddle webinar. If you can't see the screen, just send a note in the, in the chat and we'll try to rectify that. The purpose of this webinar is to introduce you to the newest member of Atasca's software family, a CAD-based meshing product called Griddle. Griddle is used to generate 3D meshes for numerical analysis programs such as FLAC3D, 3DEC, and, and many others. Griddle, as you will soon see, is extremely powerful, but it is very easy to use. Meshing complex geometry that used to take hours and days now progresses very quickly and with good results. Now, um, Griddle consists of three components and these plug into the Rhino CAD system from Robert McNeil and Associates. The three components that Griddle has are, are, are a surface remesher, a triangle surface intersector, and a hex dominant and tetrahedral volume measures. The surface remeasures include triangle and quad dominant uh, surface remeasures. Griddle also includes Block Ranger, a uh, structured hex measure. It's version 1.2. Some of you are familiar with version 1.1. If you already own Kubrick's Geo, you'll, uh, discounted pricing is available for, uh, for Griddle if you already own that. And if you don't, you can also purchase Block Ranger separately from Griddle. Uh, if you have any comments or queries, please send them to griddle at ataskacg.com. So the way we're going to run the webinar is I'll, I'll, I was going to run through some, uh, some PowerPoint slides and then show you how griddle in action. Please keep your questions till the end and we should have some time to answer questions. If I don't get to your questions, just feel free to send them to griddle at ataskacg.com. So, yeah, in the next hour or so, I'll show you how Griddle works, and um, let's just go to the next slide here, and I'll just show you some example meshes meshes we generated with Griddle. Griddle is able to capture very, very fine details. This is uh, just a, a block that contains nine intersecting faults, and these faults are curved. The faults are represented by these uh, light-colored planes here. They curve. Some of them intersect the walls. Some of them don't. And uh, Griddle was used to clean this up, remesh the faults, and then remesh the entire block. And you can see there's very, very fine details, especially along this surface here. There's a, something that pinches out between two faults. These two faults sort of pinch together. And if you want, Griddle can uh, preserve those details for you. And these faults manifest themselves as joints in 3DEC or as uh, you can make them into interfaces in FLAC 3D if you wish. And this, this is uh, very easy to mesh with Griddle. And this is a hex dominant mesh. It also contains tets, prisms, and pyramids. This is another example. It's a, uh, just a fault, faulted area with, uh, that we didn't want to represent with an interface. They had a finite thickness. And uh, it, it's quite easy to mesh with griddle. This is an example of a, a salt dome. It just it pierces through a, a couple of, uh, layers of, of uh, rock and uh, it, it didn't take that long to, to mesh in griddle as well. It was I, I constructed this in Rhino just using the, some of the surface modeling tools and remeshed everything with griddle and pressed the button and produced a uh, uh, volume mesh. Now this is um, uh, what the griddle interface looks like in Rhino. This is a Rhino screen capture and I just expanded this area here where you see these icons. These are the, the griddle icons with this little tunnel, the orange tunnel, and it has these prefixes I, S, and V. So the I corresponds to this surface mesh intersector, the S is the surface remesher, and the V is the volume measure. And this is the old block ranger icon. It's just been recolored. And some of these you may recognize from before if you've used Kubrick's. This is, this is a, a non-manifold merge. 
icon. This is a, a Rhino command, and this is Colorize Objects. It's a Visual Basic script. So Griddle is totally integrated with Rhino. It plugs into the Rhino CAD system. You know, you as soon as you click on one of these icons, you get you get help and so forth. Now the uh, Griddle workflow is pretty straightforward. You work with Rhino meshes. You don't work with Rhino surfaces. You can generate meshes from Rhino surfaces and solids, but you work with the meshes. And once you get the surface meshes the way you want them, you can fill those surface. You can fill the area inside those surfaces with uh, volume elements. The uh, Typically, you start with some coarse, disconnected surface meshes. You might get something from a mine or some civil project and uh, some scan data, and you want to clean that up. You can use Rhino's meshing tools to clean that up, or you can use Griddle to intersect these surfaces. You can use the triangle surface remeshing uh, or the quad surface remeshing. Once you get things the way you want them, you, you volume mesh it, and we'll see that in a minute. Now, uh, as I mentioned, yeah, Rhino does have very powerful surface mesh generation and editing capabilities, and you should take advantage of these. You should use them in conjunction with, with these tools in Griddle. Now, Rhino meshes are likely used for rapid prototyping, 3D printing, and CNC cutters, where we aren't too concerned about the surface element shape, size, or aspect ratio. There's usually huge differences in scales or some asperities in, in, in these meshes that are often not too important in these, uh, you know, 3D printing applications, but they're important to us when we're doing numerical analysis. We need very good control over our discretizations, and we want conformal meshes. Okay, I'm going to escape out of this and open up, open up Rhino. So I'm going to have I have a simple example here that I'll show you. And hopefully you can see my screen. There's two cylinders on my screen. And I'll just do a set working directory in, in Rhino just to point it to the right, right area. I have two cylinders. I just generated them using the solid cylinder command in Rhino. I could generate surfaces and whatever I wish. These two cylinders aren't connected. I can drag this one out. I can drag that one out. And uh, you can see they're, you know, they, they're, they're not connected at all. I'll just back out of here and put them back where they were. And I can, uh, I can mesh these things using uh, Rhino's meshing tools. And what I can do here is just click on a surface or a, a solid. I'm only going to do one right now and just say mesh. This is available from the menus as well. And Rhino has polygon mesh options. It has detailed controls and simple controls. I'll just use the simple controls for now. So when I do this, I get a mesh. And I'll close up, hide my poly surface. And we can zoom in here and you can see, okay, there's a bunch of triangles here. These are it's very finely discretized here. And they're very elongated triangles. They're not good for a numerical analysis, but they're probably good for some machining application. I could remesh this with, with Griddle. So if I select this mesh, I can click on the Griddle surface remesher. If I, let me just drag these things on my screen here so I can see it. Um, if I go to the help here and I have auto update showing and I click on the surface remesher, my, my help comes up with the Griddle surface remeshing help. You'll also see some uh, parameters here for the surface remesher. It says, what kind of a surface mesh would you like? A triangle mesh or a quad dominant mesh or odd, all quad mesh? So I'll go for quad dominant. There's a minimum edge length and a maximum edge length that I'd like to have. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave minimum edge length at zero. I'll put a maximum edge length of uh, two meters in this case. It just it's, it uses the same units as Rhino. And there's a ridge angle, which we'll talk about in a minute, and uh, a gradation of how fast you want the sizes to grade from fine to coarse. And delete input allows you to replace the current mesh with a new mesh. If I put no in here, then you end up with two meshes. You'll have the original Rhino mesh and your new mesh. But I'll leave delete input as yes. So if I do that, I end up with the new surface mesh. 
So uh, I'll put flat shade back on. So you can see here, it's a it's a pretty good pretty good mesh for uh, for uh, numerical analysis. You know, they're well shaped quads. This I haven't dealt with this other cylinder yet. It's not intersected in here at all. But I can generate a surface mesh now. I mean, a volume mesh. I'll fill that. I can fill that either with tets or with hexahedra. And here's the output formats I support. I'm just going to output the FLAC 3D for now. And I can say conformal hex dominant mesh, output the FLAC 3D, and it'll churn for a, a couple seconds, and it outputs a, a volume mesh. In my directory, I get a couple files generated. One of them is a gvol.f3grid. That's the, the volume grid that was output by Griddle here. It says gvol is finished, generated, you know, 2600 zones, mesh was output to this, this file. In, in the case of FLAC3D, this is a, an ASCII file, and we can take a look at it. It's the FLAC3D standard grid file. It contains grid points, zones, faces, and so forth. You can read it, you can modify it if you wish. We can also read this into FLAC3D and take a look at it. So you can see you know, file, grid, import, gvol.f3 grid, and we can try to rotate this around. My mouse isn't responding here. Okay, so we have a, a nice hex grid in FLAC 3D, or a hex dominant grid. There could be some prisms and tets in that case. So it's, it's as simple as that. Now let's go back to this case. I'm going to back out, get rid of that. Now I just have two cylinders. I could mesh each one independently, or at the same time I could mesh them and just say mesh, and just say detailed, well, I'll, I'll go for the simple controls here. And I end up with two meshes, but they don't intersect. You can see lines here that kind of run into the other ones here. So we could use Griddle to clean this up. If I selected two surface meshes and I could say run the intersector, and it would, it, and there's a tolerance here, it's an absolute value, it says okay if these triangles are within this distance of each other then uh, intersect them and let's hide these these things here. It's not a very nice mesh to begin with so I, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way but any, anyway it properly intersects these things. What, what you want to use the intersector for is uh, a uh, properly cleaned surface or in the case you know scan data you can intersect things. This is the preferred way of generating a mesh. I have these two cylinders which are two, two separate objects. They're not intersected with each other but we can intersect them with uh, Rhino's non-manifold merge command here. So if we do this, it merges them together. Now it's one object, but they're properly intersected. And then I can mesh it. I can do a surface mesh. And for the most part, Rhino will give me a, a pretty clean surface mesh. But these triangles are all very elongated. They're not very nice. I'll turn off my poly surface. I'm left with a surface mesh. I can remesh that now. So if I go back into Griddle, I'll say quad dominant, max edge length of two meters, ridge angle of 20 degrees, and remesh it. So now I end up with uh, a nice hex mesh, or uh, quad, quad, surf, quad dominant surface mesh. And again, we can do a volume mesh. I'll put that to flag 3D, and it output it to the same file. At present, I don't have a way of changing the file names inside Griddle, but that's one of the things when uh, well, I'll put up a dialog box. So I'll, go, I'll input this, import this into FLAC3D, and we see our, our two cylinders. If we hide this one, you can see there's that little piece that was cut out. It's all properly intersected. I, I would remesh this thing in, in a slightly different way, but I'm just showing you a very first example here that's coarsely meshed. We can also do things like this. I'll just operate on the one cylinder now. I'll back out. So let's let's just hide this cylinder and we'll operate on one cylinder. I could operate on both if I wished. I can generate a surface mesh on this. Let's we can use uh, the Rhino controls, the detailed controls, if we wish. It has has some nice controls which sometimes give you nice meshes, sometimes they don't. We can put a aspect ratio in here. 
minimum edge length, maximum edge length. We'll put two, refine the mesh, pack textures off, and we generate a mesh. So, you know, it gives you a pretty nice mesh. We could use this directly in our volume mesher if it's a closed mesh. We should check this mesh with Rhino prior to uh, volume meshing it. We can do that with the Rhino mesh repair window and you check the mesh and it says, you know, it's either a good mesh or not a good mesh. It complains about non-manifold edges, but uh, Griddle supports non-manifold edges. Okay, so we've got this mesh, this surface mesh. If I don't like it, I can remesh it with this uh, with griddle. I'm going to stay with a quad dominant max edge length to ridge angle of 20. And it's remeshed. And let's hide the poly surface. So that was the mesh I had before. Now, just say I wanted a finer mesh on the end. What I can do is use Rhino's, some of its meshing tools. I can extract that end face and I'll extract it based on some cut angle. So now I have two meshes. If I select this, I can select this, and it says two meshes, or I can select everything and it'll say two meshes in the selection. What I can do is in this property field, I can uh, select that mesh and go to the properties, and in the name field, I can specify a floating point number to represent the, the uh, size that I want. So I can say, I, I would say, say 0.25 meters. Let's make the mesh edge length smaller on that end cap. If I select both meshes and remesh again with, with the griddle surface remesher, it's going to use those global settings everywhere except that end cap. And when I remesh, I end up with a much finer mesh on the end, and this is like 0.25 meters. So I can extract you know, bits and pieces of my mesh. I can actually specify points. I can uh, take an existing surface mesh and snap a point to it. So I can go in under curve, point object, single point, let's, let's put a point here, let's put another point right next to it, so two points there. So if I select those points, okay, so I select the points and I can give those points a name as well. Let's, let's make, uh, give them a, a size metric of 0.25 and, and remember my end cap was also 0.25. I can also select individual pieces of the mesh. I can, let's just select a big chunk there. Okay, and I'll give that a size of, let's see, let's give that a size of uh, 0.5. Make it a little bit different. Now if I select everything, my end cap, that piece of the mesh that was over here and these two points, Oops. Select everything. So I, I've selected three meshes. I have the portions of the mesh, the two points, and I click on the surface remesher. I'll say delete input yes. It remeshes everything. I've got a finer mesh where those two points existed. Those two points are actually uh, recovered. They still exist there. I have a finer mesh here of a point size of 0.5 meters. This is fine on the end. So I can control my mesh, the surface meshes, uh, very precisely. Once I get a good surface mesh, I can volume mesh it. I can also do things like this. Let's back out of this. So undo redo works with everything. Now remember I had, I extracted this end cap. I'll do that again. Extract the end cap. Let's give it a size of uh, 0.25 again. Okay, but say I wanted I only want to mesh, remesh this end cap, and I don't. Want, I want it to join to this coarser mesh. What I can do is specify hard edges, edges that I don't want remeshed, and I can do that by actually drawing the edges in, or I can just duplicate the border of this. So I've duplicated the border that's highlighted here, and I have this this mesh here. So if I can, I just select those two objects and click on the surface mesher. It's going to use the global settings everywhere except where I've specified uh, a size field in the uh, properties, in the name properties. So if I remesh there, I get a very fine mesh on the end because I only remesh that, that one end cap, uh, and I said preserve those hard edges. You'll see, okay, I've got very long edges here, and it conforms to my other mesh. So I could 
use this in my uh, volume measure if I wished. So you have very, very good control over how these, how these sizes work. Now let's back out of this. So, so now we can, we can mesh these two cylinders any way we wish. I could also do things like, um, I could turn on, let me see here, control E. I drew a box around this, this object here. So I can mesh this outside of this box independently of the cylinders inside. And once I, I can, I see here, I can say mesh, Rhino will give me a surface or a, a mesh here. Okay, I don't like that mesh. I want to remesh. Surface mesh, let's say max edge length of 10, min edge length of 10. I can say 10 and 10. And maybe that's too small here. No, no, here we go. So here's a, a surface mesh of 10. And that's meshed independently of what's inside the box. So once you have conformal meshes, like those cylinders don't touch, necessarily touch the walls. I can select everything, including the cylinders, remesh, I mean uh, volume mesh it, and get a, uh, a, a good mesh for an analysis. Now, um, so uh, we, we might as well try this. Let me see here. If I hide this, I've got one cylinder in the inside. Let's, let's go back and go back here. I'll turn this off. Let's turn this off. Okay, here's my cylinders. Let me just go through this process very quickly again. I'll uh, do a non-manifold merge, do a, a rhino mesh, and I'll just do the simple controls. Okay, and oops, I didn't like that one. Mesh, I want it a little bit finer. Okay, and let me hide this poly surface. I'll remesh this with the surface measure, quad dominant again, let's go min edge length of zero, and let's go max edge length of two. And this ridge angle, I don't know if you can see my screen here, the ridge angle just controls the level of detail that you want to resolve in your, in your model. Specify, it's just the angle between two facets on your surface mesh. So specifying a higher ridge angle in Griddle's G-Surf results in less detail in your model. So you can you can draw you can join all the edges together that uh, exceed a certain ridge angle, and you can mesh those patches independently of each other. So if you want, uh, if you put a higher ridge angle in there, it it results in less detail being resolved in your model. So let's go back here. I'll remesh this with a max edge length of two, ridge angle of twenty gradation of one. So here's my mesh. Let's show my other mesh. So now I've got a, uh, a box on the outside, cylinders on the inside, and let's just put a transparent view on here. Here we go. So here's, here's my, my meshes. I can select my meshes, control A, volume mesh it. I'll do a hex dominant mesh again, just as easy to generate a tet mesh. It runs through this. And we'll read this into, uh, depending on the complexity, it does a bunch of optimization steps and stuff. It might take a, a, a few seconds to generate a mesh. And we'll get a, a mesh output to, to FLAC 3D. So now it says, okay, about 20,000 zones have been output. We can open this in FLAC 3D. Grid import. Okay, so here's my surface mesh. It's exactly as what you drew in Rhino. Inside this, we hide that group, we have my two cylinders. You also have, uh, you also have face groups in this, and I'll show that to you in, in my next example. Let's turn that off. So let me, let me just do a cut through this mesh, if I can, to get my mouse to work. 
let's just cut through the mesh and let's see here. So here's inside of my mesh. You can see, okay, it does a nice job. You know, it, 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 you can control, if you want a fine mesh in the inside, you put a, a finer detail in the middle, and uh, if you want coarser on the outside, put a little bit coarser on the, on the outside. Now here's a couple of powerful features that uh, you can uh, use with Griddle in conjunction with 3DEC or FLAC 3D, and some of the other codes have this as well, but it's a little bit more awkward. Let me close this one down and open this one up. This is my two-cylinder example again, except let me see here. Let's turn this off, this off. I, I have my two cylinders. I put a box around this thing as before, and I meshed it. But I also have a couple of planes in here, which I, I've called faults. One is just sort of floating in space, you can see. This one's floating in space. This one intersects these cylinders. I use the non-manifold merge command to select this, all these things, including the box, and merge these things together, trim away the unwanted portions of it, and generated a mesh with this, a surface mesh. And then I generated a, a volume mesh. And let's see where I have this. So here's my, let's go back here. So this was the, my final volume mesh, or surface mesh that I generated with, with Griddle. I can pare away some parts of this just so you can see in the inside. I go to the mesh tools here and I'll extract some of the side faces here. Let's open up that and I'll just hide those faces for a sec. You can see, okay, here's, here's my griddle generated mesh. It intersects this cylinder. I, I use the intersector to trim it, you know, trim it against this or also use the uh, Rhino non-manifold merge. But once I have these meshes, I can uh, extract pieces of them and name them. So in this case, I, I selected that mesh and I named it something. This one I called fault underscore one. This one here I called fault underscore two. So if I back out of this and I select all these meshes, including all the names, and click on the volume mesher, I'm not going to wait for it to complete here, I can read in what it generates for me into FLAC 3D or 3DEC or some other programs. And we'll see what it gives me here. Import. So here's, here's that example case. And I can hide that group here. You can see, okay, here's my cylinders. Here's where that one fault cut through. I can hide that group there. So it made a nice cut through there. But we also have these face groups. What happened to the other faults? Okay, so here's my mesh. I'll just turn this off for now. Let's, let's go to a face group plot. And we'll go here to uh, face groups. And these face groups are sort of unique to FLAC 3D and sort of 3DEC. And what Griddle does is, is, is names, puts names to faces, the zone faces or the element faces that but against two different groups. So if a cylinder butted against another uh, material type, it, it just arbitrarily gives it a number. So there's, it, it gives, you, gives you these names. IF means internal face, so it's buried somewhere in the model. EF means an external face. I'm going to turn off this transparency. All we see is these, all we see here are the external faces. So we've got, we've got this, so I'm going to selectively turn off some of these faces. I can't move my, here we go. So if we go to the groups, and let's turn off the external faces, and all we see are the internal faces. Say okay. Now, this is inside FLAC 3D. Here's my fault. If I hover over this, it says internal face fault 2. There's my other fault. It's floating here. If I hover over it, it says internal face fault one. And I can easily generate an interface, 
uh, in FLAC 3D allowing some slip and you know frictional cohesive type behavior on these faces in FLAC 3D or or with 3 deck for example just by specifying these faces in a in a interface command for example and these you know you can double the nodes there and you can get slip on these interfaces you don't have to go in there and try to recover all these separate names based on some complicated geometry so that's uh, that's griddle in a nutshell you you uh, you mesh things the way you want to see them on the surface meshes once once that's a conformal mesh you know it, it they have to you can't have intersecting faces once it's all clean you can you know press the volume measure and get a clean uh, or get a, uh, a volume mesh out of it the uh, I'll go back to my PowerPoint the uh, additional example I have here I'm not going to run through it in griddle but I'll just show you I'll just show you some slides here let me open this up again okay so we can easily use griddle to remesh part of a legacy model in this case this is a flac 3d flac 3d model it doesn't have to it could be uh, another solid solid model. Uh, I had this model discretized on the outside with these with just a minute here with the uh, the blue zones here and it contained these tunnels. So if somebody gave you an old model you could actually export those surface meshes back into Rhino. Rhino reads lots of surface formats like uh, VRML, uh, STL, it, it reads DXF as well. I exported these surfaces from FLAC 3D back into uh, Rhino. And what was I, I, I was interested in was just this little area here. So for example here, just for the sake of argument, say I wanted to put a little cylinder inside this little spherical area. It was easy for me to generate a spherical range. So I just said, okay, give me all the zones in that area. I want to put a little cylinder in there because it was missing in my original model. So if I, I did that with flac 3D, I exported all these faces, all these little blocks and everything, just the external faces, not the zones on the inside. I exported that uh, in, in a format that's readable by Rhino. And this is what, what I, I obtained inside Rhino. I got this surface mesh with all these little pieces on it. It's a closed surface mesh and it's hollow and I wanted to put a cylinder in there. I just wanted to remesh that local area. So I drew a cylinder in Rhino. I remeshed that cylinder independently of this surface mesh. And I put it inside and I selected everything and you know, uh, put, put it through the, uh, the volume measure. So the volume measure would only uses this ball here as the external boundary and it put in uh, a new mesh on the inside. And you could read that back into FLAC 3D. You could just delete your old mesh and insert your, old, your new mesh, import it into FLAC 3D, and uh, plug it in directly in there. And that new mesh will contain a cylinder. And you can see here there's a little cylinder appearing in here. So it's, it's extremely powerful to use. The, uh, I can open that up here in the inset here. So we have uh, this is my this is my model here, flat shade. So this is what I exported from FLAC 3D. You can see it's pretty bumpy, and there's all all sorts of stuff here. But it's a valid mesh. If I say check, check, whatever, and uh, uh, the Rhino checks is okay. The mesh doesn't have any degenerate faces. It has some non-manifold edges, which means that uh, you know more than more than one or more than two faces share the uh, the same edge. That's it's not that's not an appropriate mesh for machining, for example. They don't like non-manifold edges, but we don't mind them for for our cases because we have you know features cutting across our our volumes. So as long as it was closed, it's fine to remesh. So I just 
take that mesh, I put a cylinder on the inside. I think I have my cylinder. Yeah, there's my cylinder. So I could select both of those meshes and just simply hit the volume measure. So that's that's griddle in a nutshell. It's uh, if you know how to use Rhino, if you're familiar with CAD systems, it's very very easy to use griddle. The uh, the uh, we're we're planning you know adding more powerful features to griddle. We wanted to you know we're already using it for lots and lots of projects right now, and uh, you should. Uh, it, it, it's, it's extremely, extremely useful because you can actually have very precise control, very precise control over, you know, small areas of your mesh if you wish to. I don't have too much more to say other than, um, yeah, we, we continue to generate meshes for problems with ever increasing complexity and, and I'm going to keep adding features to Griddle. So keep sending your comments and suggestions. And uh, yeah, we, we appreciate them and if your comments and su suggestions make our products much better, much better for us and for you. And if there's any time for questions, I, I'd like to uh, try to address a few. But if not, if you don't feel like asking them on, during the webinar, please send them to griddle at atascacg.com. Thank and you very much.